Hello, beautiful globe shotters. This video is all about helping you determine what your riding ability is so that you can figure out what rides suit you best. You may have noticed that on our website, we have divided our riding ability into four levels. So there's beginner, intermediate, strong intermediate, and advanced. So let's start with beginner. So we define a beginner rider as reasonably confident, happy riding a horse at a walk, a rising trot, and learning to canter. So based on that, you've ridden before, you've, you know, you've ridden a horse, you know how to walk, trot, but you're either nervous or you just haven't been able to nail your canter. That's okay. We have rides for you and I promise you're not going to hold anyone back. So remove that from your mind now. Okay, so on any of our multi-level rides, which essentially means a riding holiday that caters for beginners right up to experienced riders, our ride hosts will split the ride according to ability. So when it comes for a change of pace, as a beginner rider, you can go at a pace that you're comfortable with. And our intermediate to experienced riders will be able to canter and not feel held back. So it's a win-win situation for both levels. And that's why we have a lot of partners where that say the wife is an advanced rider and the husband may only be a beginner rider, that they can still enjoy a riding holiday together. You'll also find as a beginner rider after a four or five day riding holiday, your confidence and riding ability is going to skyrocket. Why? Because it's an immersive experience for you. You literally are spending four consecutive days in the saddle rather than a weekly one hour lesson in an arena. So not only that, you're on a solid level headed horse. That's not to say they're dead to the leg or unresponsive. They just know their job. And you'll gain confidence every day to master your canter without overthinking it. I've seen so many of my globetrotters who are beginners or nervous on day one, just blossom and become confident intermediate riders by day one, day, by day five. It's phenomenal and it's wonderful to watch for me as a guide. It's the best thing ever. Right, the next level is an intermediate rider. So we define an intermediate rider as confident and in control on a moving horse at all paces outside of an arena, but is not riding regularly. So the key phrases there are confident riding outside an arena, but not riding regularly. This is a common level for a lot of our globetrotters. Let me give you a scenario. A globetrotter who has ridden a lot as a child, intermittently as a young adult, but they've had a hiatus from horses and want to return to the saddle with a globetrotting trip. Awesome. So they don't necessarily own a horse, but they're definitely not a beginner, but maybe rusty or not as riding fit. Does that make sense? An intermediate rider is also a great level for those globetrotters who are nervous or anxious to start with when you're on a new horse, which is so okay. And please make sure you mention on your booking form if you are a nervous or anxious rider because our ride partners will perfectly match you with a horse that will build your confidence on a daily basis. The next level is a strong intermediate rider. So this is that so that an in, that is an intermediate rider so is confident and in control on a moving horse at all paces outside of an arena who is currently riding regularly and is comfortable in the saddle for at least 6 hours per day. So essentially the difference between the intermediate rider and the strong intermediate rider is saddle fitness and being capable and willing to be in the saddle for up to six hours a day for four or five or six consecutive days. So we have a lot of globetrotters who at first would describe themselves as an intermediate rider, but they train specifically for a ride so that they're strong intermediate riders before they depart. For example, a intermediate rider who hasn't been in the saddle for a couple of years, but books on our Iceland ride or our Masai Mara ride in Kenya, and they specifically train and prep themselves prior to departure to fall into that category of a strong intermediate rider. Does that make sense? And a lot of our riders rides that have a minimum of six hours in the saddle per day, for you to get the most enjoyment out of that specific riding adventure is putting in the effort to be riding fit prior to departure. And look, if you don't have access to a horse and riding lessons just don't cut it, 
I'll touch more on that in another video about riding fitness. But if you're going to the gym, if you're running, if you're swimming, if you're cycling, if you're a physically fit person, that is going to help hugely in terms of being physically fit and ready for your ride. Yes, it's not the same as being in the saddle, but it's the next best thing. Just make sure a month or two months prior to departure, schedule in some longer trail rides near you so your body can acclimatize to the saddle, so to speak. Now, the next level is an advanced rider. So that we define as a frequent rider who is very fit, has an independent seat and soft hands and is confident on a forward moving horse at all paces over rough and variable ground in open terrain. This would be any rider who is regularly competing in eventing, polo, show jumping, hunt trials. They may be training young horses. Typically, advanced riders will always understate themselves because it pays to be modest when you're assessing your own riding ability. I mean, we have two departures on our Scottish Borders ride in Scotland where it's imperative that you're an advanced rider because you're galloping along the moorlands with 200 other riders and quite often galloping downhill like it is phenomenal. Now that is not for the faint-hearted and this would not be a place for someone to overstate their riding ability because it's dangerous for you for your horse and for your fellow riders. And I mean, we clearly state when a ride is specific only to advanced riders, we promise you that. Now, as a general rule of thumb, I highly recommend understating your riding ability and providing a transparent account of your riding ability when it comes to your booking form. There's absolutely nothing to prove on a riding holiday, which is so refreshing. No one is gonna judge you. Everyone is so encouraging and lovely and nice. So how the process works is our ride partners receive your booking form and will match you with a horse based on three criteria, height, weight, and ability. And if you overstate your ability, you're setting yourself up to fail. All of our ride partners are phenomenal, like nearly intuitive in pairing our clients with the horse of their dreams and they'll never overhorse you, I promise you. But if you have any doubts or if there's a ride you're longing to experience but you're not sure if your riding level is, ac is adequate, don't hesitate to get in touch. We're always, always, always happy to clarify things and answer all your questions, big, small, small, no matter how trivial. So give us a call, Laura or myself, and we'll workshop the rides that best suit your ability.